of the French gunman who claimed uh, seven killings and was shot by police after a 32-hour siege. Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. This is the France 24 debate. We're discussing uh, the impact and uh, really the fallout uh, from uh, Mohamed Mero, the Toulouse shooter. Uh, he targeted uh, French soldiers. He targeted a Jewish school. Uh, we were discussing uh, before the break uh, uh, and looking at his uh, profile, uh, there was the question as to did he act alone that we were broaching. Mohamed Mera's father uh, triggered outrage earlier this week in France when he vowed to sue the state over his son's killing, saying it, he could have been caught alive. In an interview with France 24 in Algiers, he himself wondered whether Mohamed acted alone. If my son was really behind what happened, that's not good. If he really committed those crimes and killed innocent people, he was wrong. If it was really him. They were innocent. There were children among them. Those young soldiers had parents. There were North Africans among them. He shouldn't have done that, if it was really him. If he was pushed by other people to commit those crimes, they were wrong. They blinded him. Clay Colcutt, uh, a lot of conspiracy theories as well over the past week. But what we do know, and uh, and we were discussing it just before the break, Jean-Charles Brizard saying uh, that he wasn't a, a lone wolf, that he did get some support at some point. The question is, obviously, how much support? That's a difficult question to answer. Um, I, uh, from what we know, he did, uh, that was, well, at least we were told uh, by French police that it was one of the reasons why it would be, was difficult to track Mera down, is that he was working alone, that he wasn't working in a network, in the known networks uh, that lead to Afghanistan and Pakistan. And that was one reason why he slipped off the radar, why they didn't think that he was potentially a terrorist here in France. Now, while he wasn't part of maybe a known network, maybe you, you, you want to react to that, um, it, it's true that it it's appears that uh, he does have accomplices. Um, this is being investigated right now, so there's nothing to be confirmed. But, for example, the videos were sent while he was at the siege. There were several cars containing weapons. Um, there's several indications and, and the role of the family. Um, it, it, it hasn't been quite clarified what role they were and, playing. And the investigation continues. Jean-Charles Brizard, did the police drop the ball? We must be very careful because what, what the police said is, uh, as far as they know, and, and they know much, um, from him, from himself, uh, he discussed with the police, as you know, uh, is that he told them that he had reached Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, I mean, uh, in 2011, and uh, managed to train there in Waziristan. Uh, but for anybody who knows the, the situation in Pakistan, and especially in Waziristan, it is absolutely impossible to reach alone Waziristan and to simply, you know, come to a training camp, knock at the door and say, hello, guys, I want to train here. Is it possible? That, that's beyond imagination, okay? So uh, thus far, police indeed haven't, you know, got any clue about his travels because he, he, he followed a different path than, than other jihadists. Uh, but this will come, hopefully, with the investigation. But for now, they're speaking only about what they know, and they know most of that uh, from him directly. All right, on the France Van Get Debate Facebook page, um, there's the issue of, uh, uh, there's Gedehun who writes, while it's extremely necessary to take such terrible crimes seriously, it does not seem appropriate to attach any political implication. Crimes are what they are and should be dealt with accordingly through the appropriate institution. So it should not be treated as a political act, he's saying, but as a crime. Uh, while Lindelwe, and this comes back to what you were saying in part one, Jean-Charles, uh, from Harare says, I wonder how he got the guns. Um, the question I want to put to you, James Cohen, is when you travel, uh, when you go to uh, working class suburbs, how much traction do hardcore jihadist theories seem to have with people? I can't claim to have done any deep sociological investigation about this, but I did walk around uh, the area of Saint-Denis and, and neighboring towns for a number of years when I worked there. And uh, 
Let's put it this way. When I was on the subway uh, track uh, at uh, Saint-Denis, uh, at Port de Paris, I would often see guys wearing, I'm not exactly sure what you call it, but the garb that you wear when you're a, a very uh, devout Muslim, referred to usually as Salafist, with a beard and a hat and everything. And it struck me that I was in the presence mostly of people who were de devout uh, worshippers uh, who had uh, invested a lot of energy into practicing their religion, but it didn't occur to me for the moment, for, for, for a moment, that I was in the presence of people who were potential murderers. Uh, the, you don't, you don't feel suspicion. You, you <laughs> Saint Denis is a very diverse place, and people live with that diversity very well most of the and, time. And they're not. There has mm. never been such an incident in 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 that mm. working class suburb. Mm, not, not. And that's another one of the issues, Jean Charles Blazau, which is maybe one of the reasons the police got caught off guard was. We're dealing with very few people. The, the estimates range from a dozen to a couple of hundred maximum. Exactly. Uh, this is the, the, the real question because um, if we can follow most of the, of the individuals who trained in, in Pakistan and combat or, or, or Afghanistan and come back in France, again, we cannot put a, a cop between um, every, every people. Uh, remember the Madrid bombings in, in March 2004? Remember that 90% of the bombers were followed by the police uh, even weeks before the attacks. So this always happened, unfortunately. Um, the question uh, uh, on Facebook regarding the definition of terrorism was interesting because in France, indeed, we don't have a political definition of terrorism. We have a legal definition of terrorism. Uh, it includes the fact to kill innocent people, and, and the second step is in order to disrupt public order, which is exactly what Mr. Mera did. Um, on Wednesday, the government, uh, and we give, this brings us to the issue of uh, how do you prevent this in the future, the government announcing measures to crack down on the preaching of Muslim uh, fundamentalism behind bars, in jails. Uh, many critics saying that uh, it's uh, when delinquents are sent to jail, as was the case with Mohammed Mera, that uh, they turn to this uh, sort of ideology. The justice minister, uh, for his part, acknowledging that there aren't enough imams currently conducting services in prisons. Renforcement. Religious services need to be reinforced to effectively supervise French Islam in prisons and make sure that there is a Muslim faith and that religious freedom is respected. But there can't be self-proclaimed imams who control the practice of this religion. They need to be trained to become imams. The, 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 the concept of controlling uh, a religion uh, might shock some of our viewers. Right which is indeed not the case in France. Uh, the inch, what we've did in the past, in a couple of years, uh, is to give Islam a, um, a forum, and a, a political forum in France, uh, because Islam is, is It didn't diverse. have a national umbrella group it, exa recently. Exactly, and, and now it has. It can speak by one, one mouth, and, and so it's, it is very important for them. It was a, a, a request. Uh, from them. Um, so fighting against fundamentalism is, is essential to prevent these acts. The second issue for me is to follow in the future not only the networks that, as we do very well in France but now follow the individuals. Uh, for example in, in, in the last 10 years we've in, in, indicted a lot of people, uh, neutralized a lot of networks and so a lot of names have appeared in various cases. Um, but we see all along these people, these individuals, some individuals um, going to prison, um, finishing their term, and then going back to terrorism. We need to have a policy uh, in, again, the uh, state of law to follow these people, to, for, to prevent them to, to act in the future. But this is very difficult. Claire Calcon? Yeah, no, I just wanted to react to what you were saying because I've interviewed quite a few um, people from the Muslim community. It's something that comes up a lot in the news internationally. And it strikes me that the uh, Muslim community, or at least what they tell me, is that it has a difficulty in organizing itself in France. Uh, they don't feel, for example, that the CFCA, maybe that's what you were mentioning, mm -hmm. the umbrella group that represents what supposedly represents them at an official level really represents them. And in terms of associations that represent Muslim people, uh, they don't really feel that, that there's anything that really works, that either they're 
they receive subsidies from, from the state. And so th there's always an issue as to who really carries their voice here in France. And a lot of people speaking for them, nobody really speaking, well, for well, them. <laughs> sorry, but the CFCM representatives have been elected, you know, at the local level mm -hmm. uh, by uh, members of the, of the community. Uh, as every religion, we wanted the, the Muslims to have their representation. Uh, the Jewish have, the Jewish have, and the Catholics have. So it was important to, to give them a, a representation. Now there were always people I understand who. I think there were members it. of the mini Interior mm -hmm. Ministry who are on the board, and uh, I mean a lot of uh, bloggers, for example, a lot of people point to me and say, "Go and look at the web. That's where you'll you'll get, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a, an, an idea of what they're saying," and that. A lot, quit, a lot of people criticize the CFCM for its role here. At the same time, his role is very important. For example, we were speaking about prison. They are the ones who uh, are training officially uh, the imams in, in mm -hmm. prison, yeah. precisely to, to, to be sure that uh, the Islam they teach is a moderate Islam. Uh, so this is an important uh, step uh, in good direction, I think. James Kahn, let me turn to the American in Paris that you are. Um, uh, the way the French state deals with religion, what do you think of it in this case? Right at the moment, I don't think much of it. Because right at the moment, we're in a phase of political uh, discourse about Islam, which is a, a very stigmatizing one, which, as we were observing last week on the debate, um, I think the, the atmosphere is terrible. I think that the atmosphere couldn't get much worse. <clears throat> um, what I think also is that uh, if I were Muslim uh, growing up in France, I would have the impression that um, crimes committed against people of other religions count for more and are taken more seriously than crimes committed against Muslims. I'm imagining that that's the kind of thing that somebody like Murat must have been feeling. I'm not condoning by any stretch of the imagination what he did, but I think that there's, a, there's that kind of feeling that, uh, that, that is uh, what, what widespread. Makes you, what makes you say that? What makes me say that? Well, well I, I, uh, I, I've been reading a little bit uh, about reactions taken in Toulouse with youth who were interviewed. I don't know if you met some of the same ones, but I was reading Rue 89 uh, just this morning, and uh, the journalist came up with um, commentaries by people who said, um, would there have been a moment of silence if the, if the children in the school had not been Jewish? I, I, I wonder if that's the case. Uh, I think there's a double standard uh, uh, that's applied today. Um, I hope it goes away. Uh, Claire Kalka, you <coughs> went and uh, met with uh, people from both the Jewish and Muslim community in Toulouse. Toulouse is a city that's otherwise known as very vibrant. Uh, it's uh, very peaceful. Very peaceful. It's known mm. for its cuisine, Wonderful its uh, rugby, mm. its aeronautics industry. Mm, uh, yes. What, what was it like when you met with those two communities? Well, uh, initially, uh, the Muslim community, well, the Muslim community, uh, the main lead uh, in the investigation was a neo-Nazi lead. Uh, police suspected neo-Nazi groups that might have been kicked out of the, uh, of the army of being behind the attack. So there wasn't, while I was there, any antagonism between, uh, between the two communities. And uh, there was even shows of, of solidarity between the Muslim and the Jewish communities. For example, uh, the, I think, local Muslim children uh, brought flowers to the school. And uh, in their discourse, the Mothers of, of pupils I met who, who lost a, a, a playmate uh, were very careful in saying, you know, we don't want this to turn into um, something between Jewish people and Muslim people. They, and they've held joint marches since. And they've held jo joint marches since. So there's been a real reaction in that sense that uh, we don't want, we want the person brought to justice, but we don't want this to uh, accelerate into uh, hate crimes. Let's pick up on what James was saying about the, uh, the, the poison political climate, as you describe it, uh, in France. Uh, Mera buried this Thursday after much debate over whether it should be in the area, whether uh, the far right, whose candidates rising in the polls since the shooting, uh, weighing in on the argument with another controversial remark. C'est quand même assez scandaleux. I think this is scandalous that we are not able to make Algeria accept Mera's body. He has a lot more ties to Algeria than he does to France. Does this mean he will be buried with the victims? I'm afraid, like all French people, that the place where he is buried will become a revolting place of pilgrimage 
for those who want to spew their hatred of France. Pour tous ceux qui veulent déverser leur haine de la France. Uh, <coughs> is that going to be the case? Because again, we mentioned it's a very small number of people. It's not going to become a no, place of again, pilgrimage. Here we're confusing a debate we have about Mohamed Mera. And, and we're speaking at the same time about the Muslim community and the organization of, the, uh, of Islam in France, which has nothing to do That's the justice one with minister, another. The justice minister that who has nothing one to do. So one when with the another. justice minister talks about uh, the issue of uh, uh, more um, uh, of uh, keeping a closer eye on how the Muslims pray in prison, right, that's okay. But that's just, we, we must be clear that. Those are two separate issues. Otherwise, I mean, it would, it would tend to say that Mohamed Mera was in some way representing uh, others, other Muslims especially, is which the, he was not. Is the Israeli-Palestinian conflict completely separate from all of this too? Which he was not. He was acting by himself and for himself. That's all. That's what he claims. You know, Osama bin Laden also claimed repeatedly that he was... Uh, he was um, um, he wanted to, to make more for, to, to, okay. help, to help the Palestinians. He did not He did nothing to help the of Palestinians. Of course not, of course not. That's he killed right. others. Right, okay, of course, so of course. This is an excuse. This is a usual excuse for... for I'm for, not making excuses by no, 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 means, I'm but, you, you, you were referring mm -hmm. to, to, to the claims of, of Mr. Mera. You did, mm -hmm. indeed. I, I've, I've, I've heard that. Right. But one but final point before we go, which is, the, which is how this is impacting the presidential race. Uh, less than three weeks to go. The latest polls show Marine Le Pen, which you just heard from there, is up in the polls in the first round. Uh, she's up to 15 percent. And uh, Nicolas Sarkozy pulling away slightly in the first round. However, in the second round, it's still uh, the socialist front runner who's in the lead in the second round. Francois Hollande uh, on 53 percent to 47 for Nicolas Sarkozy. So the gap, which had been double digits, uh, is now narrowing. Claire Colcutt, uh, three weeks to go. Is, it gonna, is this issue going to... Uh, uh, loom large all the way till election day? Um, I, I tend to think not. I think that it was very large in the, uh, uh, in the, after the attacks, um, I, and I think it was very shocking, and that's why it occupied space. But I think that um, in terms of the recent polls show that people are still uh, worried about uh, jobs, they're still worried about unemployment, um, and security doesn't come very high in, in, their, in their issues, in the issues of, of the, the upcoming election. Um, but on the other hand, I think there aren't that many examples of something so dramatic happening so close before an election in France, that is. All right, Claire, Spain, Co Claire Colcutt, I want to thank you. I want to thank Jean-Charles Brizard and James Cohen for joining us. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 debate. Stay with us. Coming up next, it's time for business. And there's another campaign issue here, which is uh, tapping into oil reserves. Marcus Carlson will have the latest on that.